Thanks so much for hanging in there with us. We're going to head straight to the next caller. Darren, can you hear us? You have a question for our guest tonight. Darren, can you hear us? Oh, yes, it's me. Yes. Um, I have a comment. Um, my ancestors are from, um, we are part of the fourth immigrant group. And, um, and my comment is regarding the job, I understand. I love the guests just like any of my other brothers and sisters, but the jobs in the uh, chicken plants and the meat packing plants and everything was before we had this immigration crisis at the border. So someone was doing those jobs. A lot of those countries been around for a hundred years. I don't mind, and a lot of us Americans do not mind immigrants. It's the illegal part because we have to abide by laws. We get repercussions or consequences when we don't obey those laws. So we understand it's expensive and everything, but there's a lot of exploitation. We blame the businesses as well for trying to get cheap labor. And also, um, there's another misnomer. Uh, they want to say they pay their own way. A lot of immigrants do need help. They come over here virtually with nothing, as they say. So working and paying your taxes, yes, but you needed help in the beginning. Childbirth, health care, and, and food stamps, housing, housing vouchers, all of those things. It just seems like it's being told like America and Tennessee don't have its own issues. As being part of the fourth immigrant community, we have some areas in our city that rival any third world country. We have children going hungry, we have drugs, we have gangs, and I just think that both sides need to be told on that matter. Thank you. Well, thank you, Darren, for your call. I, I completely agree uh, with Darren about there's a, there's a problem that goes just beyond immigration. Um, I do think that there is a lot of um, there's a lot of, uh, of of businesses that are there are a lot of businesses that are taking advantage of immigrants coming in undocumented. They're getting cheap labor because they're not paying the correct wages. Um, that is a problem that I think has to be dealt with. Um, that those are businesses that should probably be more regulated as into who are they hiring and the practices they're committing. Some of our clients um, suffer a lot of um, suffer a lot through through this practice because they're not paid well. But not only do they not pay well, they're mistreated work and they cannot report any of this because they're working under the shadow. And so I think that this kind of um, situation just makes it hard not only for, for, for immigrants coming in, but for U.S. citizens as well. And, and I think that the concern that Darren raises is really legitimate. Um, I do think that when it comes to uh, public benefits, at least in Tennessee, it's different in every state, but in Tennessee, um, immigrants coming in have a hard time obtaining any kind of benefit. So. If you are undocumented in, 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 in Tennessee, it's likely that you, you're not able to get any benefit at all. Mike on line five. Mike, you're up. You have a question for us here tonight. Uh, I would like to make a statement and then ask a question, please. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, as a Tennessee and as a U.S. citizen, I find it really amazing how skillful the illegal immigrant population and their legal representatives are in pouncing on emotional issues as opposed to abiding by U.S. laws. For instance, uh, one child that might not have had a diaper change gains national attention, whereas we have literally hundreds of thousands of young children in America that need that same, same kind of attention. Uh, to justify uh, the plight of illegal immigrants by selectively picking emotional issues has sickened America because we know that that is not telling the entire story. Uh, U.S. taxpayers are paying tens of billions of dollars just to pay for the law enforcement and the border patrols and the social services to try to control this flood of immigrants into our country. 
you don't hear the illegal immigrants even acknowledging that what they're doing is illegal. You have nobody in that community that will admit the cost to America. For instance, the lady that is on your program now talked about a billion dollars paid into the American Treasury, but yet it's costing America 500 billion. It's costing America in terms of law enforcement and uh, social services and and people managing all of the different medical needs. Uh, in the hundreds of billions of dollars, the immigrant contribution to the finances of America is that is big on Americans today. And when we say something about it, when we talk about our jobs being lost to illegal immigrants or people who are totally unqualified to do anything but these menial jobs, we are labeled as racist in country when we try to defend our own rights and to have this kind of program I think it's beneficial to, to hear all sides but you get such a slanted interpretation uh, from illegal immigrants because they want you to believe that you are breaking the law when you call their hand on their illegal activities. It is a crying shame in America that our politicians don't have the backbone or the courage to stand up to this onslaught of our culture, of our religion, of our social institutions, and of our innocent citizens that pray fall victim to this whole scheme of not just organized crime, but for governments in South America and Central America deliberately dump tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people into America just to get rid of them, many of them criminals, because they don't want to deal with their own problems. I, the question that I have to these two people who are in defense of this whole array of problems. When are you going to acknowledge the fact that Americans are entitled to have their country, the rights in their country, not being infringed upon by foreigners who do not give two cents for the safety of Americans, for the financial well-being of Americans? They just want, you just want what you want, regardless of the legal aspects of it. Thank you for letting me speak. Mike, thank you so much for calling. I'm going to agree with you with something, that this program definitely allows us to talk more about this. And immigration is a very big topic. It's a huge topic. I would, I would love to sit down just with you and have a coffee about this and, and, and show you that um, immigrants, we bring a lot to this country. We don't just take away. We bring a lot. Um, there's a lot to learn from both cultures. I think that uh, I would, I, I mean, personally, I would love to have, sit down with you and ha have some Peruvian food. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had it, but um, I think that um, there's a big problem, yes. Um, and we acknowledge uh, there's children here in the U.S. who are suffering. There's immigrants, non-immigrants, undocumented immigrants, children. We are not going to put anybody on top of anyone. It would just what we do, our work that we do is focused on individuals who are coming here from other countries. And I, I, don't, I don't expect to, to make that an issue that's more important than an, uh, a U.S. child being um, deprived from rights. But um, I think that, I, I think that this, this rhetoric of um, making immigrants or undocumented immigrants just look um, as enemies, I think it's, it's just not helpful with the conversation that we want to have. Let's get in one more uh, caller before we head to this break. Joe, you are up. Do you have a quick question for us? I um, just want to make a statement about, uh, I mean, we've often turned away immigrants. It's not a 21st century problem. We, we, we have done this since the beginning of our country. We have turned away immigrants. Um, I think that, uh, like, some people are confusing um, legal immigrants with, undocumented immigrants which is kind of bizarre to me because what's the fear of becoming documented if you're undocumented then you lose your right to federal assistance i don't i don't understand how you can even be here if you're undocumented and get federal assistance it's bizarre to me just get documented our country's built on the fact of turning away certain immigrants that's the way that's the way it's always been I mean, we turned away the Irish in the late 1800s. We turned away the Germans. You know, we, we turned away the, the Israelis in, in the 1940s. We turn away immigrants. It, it's, it's bizarre to me that, that the young lady up there that, that wants to 
you know, stand on the Statue of Liberty phrase, give us your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. You know, there, a lot of these, uh, if they're sneaking in, I mean, the Statue of Liberty stands on a place where people that, that came and saw the Statue of Liberty were documented. They pulled the boat up, they got documented, and they became Americans, you know? To, to, they're not coming over here if they're sneaking in to urine the breeze free. They're coming over here to see what they can get for free. And it's, it, it's bizarre to me that we've lost what the Statue of Liberty really stood for was to come in, let's get documented on Ellis Island, let's get you into the country. I mean, I want your comments on that. Thank you, Joe. Um, immigration has changed a lot since the time when um, Irish were coming in through the, through, through the border and, and, and docking on Ellis Island. Right now, I assure you that if our clients, at least the ones we work with, would, would be able to just go ahead and process and get and obtain a document, it would be that easy. They would do it immediately because I, I, you're right. I mean, if you're here undocumented, you are, do not have a benefit to many of the, of the, of the public assistance that you may want to have. So I don't think it's just as simple as saying, well, if you're here and you're undocumented, go ahead and get documented. I think that people would do that immediately if, they, if, if that was a possibility. Unfortunately, the clients we serve are here and they're here because they cannot continue living in the country they're in. And the reason they're coming here is they're seeking refuge. And so if we're going to close the border, we're going to close the doors on that, I believe that that's something that we need to talk more about. Um, I do think that, like I said, if it was easy enough for a client to get any kind of documentation, they would get it. Hold that thought. We will have more just on that topic coming up after this commercial break.